Hello everybody and welcome to another video review by ThePilotReport.com. My name is Len and today I'll be sharing with you iFlightPlanner.com. Now iFlightPlanner.com is an online flight planning software that uses the CSC Duats as a background engine. Now CSC Duats is an FAA approved weather source but it also offers flight planning functionality, much of which drives iFlightPlanner.com. Now it also uh, contains a flight wizard function. You can file your flight plans through the website. You are allowed up to five aircraft profiles. With iFlightPlanner.com, you are able to get a certified aviation weather briefing. There's an internal airport facility directory. There's a weight and balance calculator, which is a premium feature. The uh, online logbook allows you to view your last five flights or unlimited flights if you pay for premium. And the premium package does start at $9.95 a month and there are additional savings on any 3 month or 12 month plans. Most of the functionality of iFlightPlanner.com is free with the exception of the weight and balance calculator and the logbook functionality. So let's go ahead and take a look at the software. Now, I've already pre-populated my own aircraft and weight and balance information to speed through this process. So aircraft here I've got November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a Piper Seminole. Now I don't have any favorite routes saved so what I'm going to do is input a flight from Hot Springs, Virginia, and I'm going to go out to Nashville, Tennessee, KBNA. All right, uh, we'll use Bowling Green, Kentucky as an alternate, and I'm going to go at uh, 10,000 feet. All right. On the right-hand side, you can pick a detailed nav log or a basic nav log. Now, the next options you have this drop-down menu are um, routing, low-altitude airway routing. Um, you can go VOR direct if you choose, or something, you know, GPS direct. But for today's purposes, we'll go ahead and pick a low-altitude airway routing. And I want this flight to depart. Uh, let's see. We'll do two hours from now. Okay. So the next thing you do after the top information is filled in is we click Show Route and Generate Nav Log. Now that the nav log has been generated, you can scroll down and you'll see this nice overlay. So one of the first options you can do is you can display it on a regular Google map. Uh, the next option is to provide it on a satellite imagery. You can use uh, terrain, a hybrid, and of course the first one we were looking at which was the sectional or you can uh, display it over the IFR low in route chart or high in route chart. Now one of the other things you'll notice is that you do have the radar overlay on top of the flight plan. Now those options can be included up here on the top whether you want to display the radar, the satellite imagery, um, the infrared or visible. On the right hand side you can select uh, if you want to show IF areas of IFR, IFR obscuration, turbulence, icing, mountain obscuration, convective activity or ash. Uh, and additional things, adverse flight rules and such. Now they have a, a new feature that just recently came out called rubber banding. So if you don't like the route that's on here, say for instance I want to change from the hazard VOR and I want to make something a little bit more direct. So we can uh, drag and drop to a different airport and release. Now you're going to get a menu here that pops up that says, would you like to snap this to a nearby airport or nav aid or leave it as latitude and longitude? You can also save it as a custom location, which happens to be a new function of the most recent software update, the ability to create, save, and use custom waypoints. So we'll go ahead and select a snap to a nearby airport and nav aid. And up will come this menu with a list of airports and facilities and nav aids for you to select uh, as a new waypoint. So I'll go ahead and we'll just use the uh, Lonesome Pine Airport as a new waypoint. And now that I've done that, you notice at the top of the menu here, you've got an orange warning that says your route has been modified. So what it does is once you've changed something on the route, it will give you notification that you need to update your flight plan. So you go ahead and you just click on the orange bar. Your, your, your flight plan has now been updated and you can continue on with the other information. Now another feature is uh, if you were to right click on the map, now if I wanted to right click here on the uh, London VOR, I can pull up quick info, remove it from route, 
center on the map or center and zoom. So let's get some quick info on the London VOR. Up pops a menu, gives me it's a vortex, the latitude and longitude, and again, options to remove it from the route, center my map on there, or center and zoom. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now that we've decided that we've got a nice route that we're, uh, that we're happy with, we just continue to scroll down, and what you'll see is a navigation log. And the navigation log is going to include all the waypoints along the route of flight. And in, in this next column here are the altitudes based on climbing and descending. And then it's going to tell you that your routing is from Hot Springs direct to Covey, direct to Wucky, et cetera, et cetera. Now, most of you are familiar with what a conventional flight plan looks like. So the other columns should be pretty familiar to as far as winds, magnetic course, and true airspeed, etc. Continue, um, actually, if we scroll just back up slightly here, you'll see there's some weather tabs. One of the nice things here is if you click on HSP weather, it's going to tell you the, the weather at Ingalls Field. And in, on the uh, left-hand column, it's decoded. Now, over here on the right side, you can look up the NOTAMs, any air mets which there are none, SIGMETs, again, there are none, no PIREPs, and the area forecast is not bringing anything. Now we'll go ahead and we'll check our destination weather at, at Nashville. Now Nashville's coming up red here, which means that it's IFR conditions. So what you'll notice is that it's overcast at 1,200, um, 5 miles of uh, visibility, temperature's 8 degrees. And below is the TAF, broken down, again, in decoded format. On the right-hand side, now we can see at this particular airport, there are some NOTAMs. Now you can continue on and see what sort of air mets and SIG mets, PIREPs, and information is available in Nashville. And also for Bowling Green, since that is our alternate, again, you can check out the weather there. So once all that looks good, we'll go ahead and click Next Step. Now Next Step brings us to the route briefing. So we've gone ahead and, and what we're going to do is send a request out for our weather. So we want to select uh, for this particular option our standard route low altitude. Now if you're looking for a different type of briefing you can go ahead and select that. You'll notice that in the flight route box just below it our flight plan route has been dropped in there pre-populated and also our time and route. We'll go ahead and click get the certified weather brief. Now that the certified weather briefing has been brought up we can go ahead and view exactly what we're looking for here. Now in this left hand column are particular headings that you might be looking for. So if you're looking for the departure closest terminal weather you go ahead and click there. Say for instance, uh, okay now I want to check out the pilot reports. So I'll go ahead and click down on pilot reports. Now if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to look at each item individually you can go ahead on the right hand side and click show all sections which will bring them all up in the same screen. So you can just scroll from top to bottom through each item in particular. Well, we're done. We'll go ahead and click the next step once again. Now, this next box that you're dropped into is the weight and balance. Again, the weight and balance is only a function of a premium membership. So for the free account, you won't have access to weight and balance. But for those premium members, the next step here will be to go ahead and enter some information in. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I've already put in my basic empty weight and conf configured the weight and balance to make sure that it's accurate with the aircraft I'm flying. So at this point, all we have to do is go ahead and enter in the pilot weight, the co-pilot, 170 pounds, no passengers, Let's see, we've got 100 pounds of baggage, and um, we're going to burn three gallons on the ground for taxi, and then uh, 55 gallons in flight. Now, one of the nice things about iFlightPlanner.com is they use a lot of visual cues. You see these boxes are red. Now, anything red means that there's a problem. Anything green means that there's everything looks looks great. So right here, once I've calculated my weight and balance, it happens to look perfect. Now, if something was really screwed up and we put in some weight that didn't work out, say for instance, 500 pounds of passengers in the rear compartment, if you were to calculate weight and balance, it turns red to alert you, hello, you are not within envelope here. So that's a nice function. Let's go ahead and remove that and make this back to a good looking weight and balance. And now that it looks normal again, it shows you you're within your normal category. If you continue scrolling down, you can actually see your graph of where you fall within the envelope. Now they have a really cool function here where you can email these results to yourself or even text them to yourself. Now this is of course in addition to printing them or in lieu of printing them. Uh, so okay, weight and balance looks good to me. Let's go ahead on to the next step. And here we go. Up to this, uh, the next step is now to file an FAA flight plan. So 
If I was to file, I would choose whether or not I'm going VFR, IFR, and you'll get, you'll see here under the uh, VFR section whether or not you want to officially file a flight plan or not. Now under IFR, of course, there is no option. So uh, it's just like filing a normal flight plan, your true airspeed. I've got 140, uh, let's see, I've got a red dot here, so I need to go ahead and say that there's two on board. Once that f is filled in, you'll see the red dot has disappeared. Uh, time and route, three, four, three hours, four minutes. I've got my route. Remarks are none. You can put in your pilot address, destination contact, all that good information. One really neat function that iFlightPlanner.com has is that they can send you an acknowledgement when your flight plan has been officially filed with the FAA. Now, you can actually go into their system days ahead of time and plan your flight and save it. And within 23 hours from your time of departure, iFlightPlanner.com will go ahead and file that flight plan for you automatically. They'll take care of filing it for you, and then you'll, you'll get an acknowledgement in your email or via text, whichever option you choose, that, hey, my flight plan has been filed. We'll go ahead and finish the flight entry. One nice thing here it shows is... You've got the documents on the uh, left-hand column, such as a airport diagrams, whatever alternate minimums, certain IFR charts, same for Nashville and Bowling Green are alternate. Now, the nice thing is this pretty much, if you wanted to print out like a briefing, a briefing card, you go ahead and view and print flight document. Now, in the, the uh, flight document screen, what you have is what I call a briefing card, and it gives you the weather conditions at your point of departure, as, and including a VFR layout of uh, hot springs. You scroll down, and you'll see any sort of associated frequencies um, and any other information that goes along with the airport. Now, your arrival uh, information here, your destination information, Nashville, again, the weather information, a destination chart on the right-hand side, your frequencies. Below that is your weight and balance. And continuing on is an overlay map. So you can take this along with you, print it out, and you'll have all the information you need. There's a nav log attached to the bottom, continuing on, a nice message that says, hey, guys, remember to close your flight plan. So we're looking here. And I've got a departure radar, destination radar. This, this is absolutely wonderful. I mean, what more information are you going to need when you're out there flying? So I would print this off and take this with me. Once you're done actually flying, is we'll come up here to flights, click on my logbook, and you'll see that the flight has been saved here. So what you can do is now, I'm, now that I've actually gotten to Nashville and I'm, I'm finished with my flight, I'm going to come into iFlightPlanner.com click the close and log option and I'm gonna put in here that it took me 2.9 uh, you know one day landing I had an instrument approach uh, 2.9 multi-engine time etc and you can fill this out and save the flight log info now when you save it you'll get a display here that shows uh, and since this is the only flight that I have logged in here all it shows me is total time of 2.9 so this is one of the nice things go ahead and check out the airport facility directory now some of the options are uh, on the left hand side finding your airport facilities on the right hand side I've got some favorites set up in there for airports that I frequently fly to now one of the nice things is check out Boston it's showing Boston as a yellow dot here this is marginal VFR if I want info I just go ahead and click info and it brings me all the detailed info regarding Boston as far as uh, weather conditions uh, you can see at the top here the airport diagram um, if I click on operations tab, etc., you could just go through and see all the information associated with the airport. To sign up for your free account, visit thepilotreport.com forward slash iFlightPlanner. It's certainly been a real pleasure making this video for you today. And for more information, check us out on Twitter and Facebook. Now this is Len at thepilotreport.com wishing you clear skies and calm winds. Take care, everybody.